I really felt um, this this last two weeks that um, I I would bring two standalone messages. Uh, just thinking what I felt God wanted uh, me to bring and sort of speak into the church. And uh, this one and next week are going to be just two, two messages that I really feel God's put on my heart uh, for everybody at Freedom Christian Church. And um, again, the, these are things I've talked about before and messages I've probably preached on way back when, but they're just something Ben's been going through the book of Acts and he was in chapter 11 last week. So next week I'm going to speak on something uh, that's in chapter 11 of the book of Acts. Um, this week I'm going to speak on uh, two uh, aspects of uh, a verse in Proverbs and of course Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. Uh, so let me read Proverbs 29 uh, verse 18 and this is my version of it in this Bible. Uh, I'll give you another couple of translations of it when I begin the message. But uh, this is what the word of the Lord says in Proverbs 29 verse 18. It says, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. Then over in Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 1 to 3, it says, I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And this is where I'm going to be speaking. The Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. For this uh, for still this vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end, it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Let's just pray, shall we? Father, this morning, as we look at your word, I just pray that in these uh, last two messages, you'll speak into our hearts those things that you would have us hear this morning. Just pray for guidance that your Holy Spirit will teach us. That Lord, you'll help us to open our hearts, open our ears, open our eyes this morning as we want to see and hear what it is you have to say to Freedom Christian Church. So Father, we thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Proverbs 29, 18, uh, two translations, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. And then in the King James it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. That's why I've entitled this message. Without a vision, the people perish. I believe every church needs a vision. Every individual needs a vision. Going forward, there needs to be something that you and I set our sights on as individuals and also as a church. You know, we watch the Olympic Games. We watch athletes train. Four years in the training. They go through all the early mornings, the late nights, the diets, all the training uh, schedules that they have to keep to. Why? Because they have a, have a vision. What is the vision? The gold medal. That's what they're training for. That's their vision. You know, we talked about, as the puppets did, having family. You know, well, we had two teenage girls growing up. And also now we've got teenage grandsons. I need to tell you, the grandsons are more scruffy than the girls ever were. You know, boys seem to be like that. But you get a boy all of a sudden in his teenage years, you, you know, couldn't care less. Starts to have a shower, put cologne on. Puts, you know, spray under his arms, combs his hair. Why? He's got a vision. It's called a girlfriend. <laughs> he has a goal, and that's to impress and please this person he's now going out with. Every single one of us needs a vision. I also need to say that discipline becomes part of life 
because there is now a goal. So the discipline for the athlete, the discipline for the boy, the discipline for you and I as individuals and as a church is really a, a, a point to remember, a point to bring into the situation. To have a vision, it needs discipline. And so if you have a discipline problem, there'll be a vision problem. Proverbs 22, train a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's part of the training. Just like an athlete physically has to do all of those things, so too a follower of God, a believer in Jesus Christ. The training is important. It all brings the vision. We're all different people. We all have different needs. God doesn't make any two people alike. You might say hallelujah to that. <laughs> but he doesn't. We all have a separate identity. We all have different gifts and talents. They're within each one of us. And you and I have to identify them and nurture them so they can be used for the glory of God. Amen. Unfortunately, there are religions, I'm going to say that word, because I'm not a fan of it, but there are religions of today who've got a habit of trying to clone Christians, clone individuals, make them conform to their denomination. You know, I, I, came, I came to United States of America 20 years ago, Julie and I and Gemma, and I heard more than anything when talking with somebody about faith, well, I'm a Baptist. I wanted to know, were they a believer in Jesus Christ? I didn't want to know what religion they were. Yeah, it's funny, I've just remembered. Back in England, we used to go to conferences, and me and one of the other elders of the church, we used to sit in these conferences, which were for all different denominations. We used to, we used to play a game called Spot the Denomination. <laughs> Seriously. We, we knew the Methodists because they have an anorak on and a Bible underneath their arms. We knew the Pentecostals because they were all over the place. And we knew the Baptists because they were playing a game called Spot the Denomination. It's vitally important that we each come with our individual gifts. And as we come as individuals, then we become part of a team. A team that needs to be all going in the same direction. The strength lies in the body of Christ in the team dynamic. Paul taught that, that uh, lesson, that teaching as individuals, but also as a collective body. 1 Corinthians 12. Verse 12, the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all its many parts are many, they form one body. One body. Many parts, many different gifts and talents, but one body. And so as we each come together with our gifts and visions, the whole body becomes complete. The function of any leadership in any church, not just this church, should be to train and to teach. Those who become followers of Jesus Christ, they should teach the congregation how to be in a dis uh, discipleship environment that serves as a body of people. Not in the way they want them to go, but in the way God teaches through the Word of God. That is God's teaching. All different parts, but one body. That's a biblical concept. Churches need to train, to teach, to give a vision. God will make that happen. God will enlighten the church with a vision and individuals with a vision. That's what Habakkuk 2 verses 2 to 3 are all about. This is Habakkuk, a minor prophet. 
He complained to God that the wickedness of, of the people of Judah was seemingly going unpunished. But God told him that he would judge Judah. It will be in God's time, not his. And so what did God tell Habakkuk? And what can you and I learn from it as we look at these things this morning? First of all, it says in verse 2, write it down. The vision that God gives, write it down. You and I need to know where we're going. There are leaders of churches who wonder why people don't follow them. The reason is they don't know where they're going. Have you ever been on a vacation where you've, and especially in the olden days, you've had to go onto Google Maps and you had to write it all out, step by step, where you're going on that journey. Now it's a little bit more simple. You just put it in your GPS. Now we look at that concept of life, how when you go on vacation, you know which plane you're getting on. You know which hotel you're going to. I don't know of anybody who just says, oh, I'm going away. Well, where are you going? I don't know. I don't know. You know? You, unless you just kind of get in a camper van and you drive off into the sunset. But nine times out of ten, you're going somewhere that you've planned. And you've mapped it out. And you've gone on that journey following those plans. You choose a place. You choose a hotel. You choose a flight. And you're given a schedule to set off. The flight has a destination. It's going somewhere. Guess what? Our destination is heaven. On flight 777. <laughs> 777 to paradise. Amen. That will be a great destination, won't it? Well, we're all heading there if you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. That's our vision. That's our target. That's our goal. That's who God wants us to point people to. The vision of paradise, of spending eternity in heaven. And we all have to be going in the same direction. We don't want anybody swim, swimming upstream. Firstly, write it down. Secondly, make it plain. We can read that in verse 2. Make it plain. Plain as day, not complicated, not difficult to understand. On your bulletins every week, you have our vision statement. Turn to your bulletins for once in your life. <laughs> Just kidding. On the back of it, we have our vision statement. Freedom to reach people for Christ. Freedom to teach people about Christ. Freedom to minister the love of Christ. So that as we become his disciples, we will have the freedom to go into all the world and witness for Christ. Do we understand what it is that God wants freedom, Christian church, to be about? In the early days as we prayed about going forward, Obviously, the, the name freedom came about because of a conversation I had with a, a dear old lady who wanted to know what was going on as I left the previous church. God put that verse, John 8, 336, into her head, into her mind, that when she had that conversation, she shared it with me. If the Son shall set you free, you'll be free indeed. Oh, I just felt Freedom Christian Church, what a name. We're free. We don't belong to anybody except to God. And so when we looked at this issue of having a vision statement, of going forward, that became our word to use with every phase of who we were about as a church. Freedom to reach people for Christ. We need people to get saved. We have to reach them. They have to get saved. And as they get saved, freedom to teach people about Christ. That's discipleship. 
And then freedom to minister the love of Christ. That's when we become disciples and we're part of a, a, a group like this. We have fellowship together. It's part of God's word in the book of Acts when he described the four pillars of the church in that early church. Fellowship is one of them. And so that as we become his disciples, we'll have the freedom to go into all the world and witness for Christ. What's that? Outreach. That's our primary duty as believers. To outreach to people who don't know Jesus Christ. And that's yours and my responsibility. That's all encapsulated in our vision statement. It's plain enough. You know, I, I don't know if you can identify this, but you do any work with an attorney and they give you some documentation. I haven't got a clue what it says. They can give you 20, 30, 40 pages. You, you buy a house and there must be 50 pages. You have to sign every page. I, I hold my hands up. I don't think I ever read one page. <coughs> it's not simple enough. You have to trust what they're giving you to sign it so that at the end of it you get your house. But we have a vision statement that's plain and simple. Write it down, make it plain. We have to be that church that, yes, it's, it's simple, but it's profound. And you and I should tell it, remember it. We shouldn't debate it, we should declare it. It's unique to us. Our vision is plain and simple. You know, I think a lot of modern churches have gone so far away from that Act 2 model. Luke describes in Acts 2 the things that they did. They were a small band of people. The first one was 120 disciples. And as they met in houses, they moved to another house. Then when that got full, they moved to another house. I believe God wants you to be, be part of a fellowship to quote a situation comedy phrase where everybody knows your name. Seriously. I think we should know one another. And we should have fellowship with one another. And we should care about one another's needs. And make sure that there's nobody goes by without, whether it's a phone call, a visit, or a letter. Unfortunately, there's churches that become mega, mega budgets, mega programs, mega buildings, mega vision statements. Well, here's the thing. We're plain and simple in our place of worship. And I believe God is pleased with what he's given us. You and I need to make it plain, we need to make it simple of reaching those people who don't know Jesus Christ. We need to bring them to hear the gospel. And if they won't come to hear the gospel, we have to go and invite them. We have to knock on the doors and ask them to come. And if they don't want to come at that point, give them a Bible so that one day, hopefully, they'll pick it up and get saved by reading what they read in that word. The vision that we have is the same method that is a biblical method for reaching people. And if we preach and teach it, it will never lose its power. Programs won't save people, but the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ will save them. Write it down. Make it plain. Finally this morning, the vision is for an appointed time. Verse 3. The vision awaits an appointed time. We're in a world that wants something now. Our kids, when they were growing up, when they asked us, I want it now. Well, no, you need to wait for your birthday. You need to wait for Christmas. No, I want it now. This world wants everything right now. Joseph waited 17 years for God to call him. David waited 20 years 
Moses 80 years. Until 10 years ago, I waited nearly 25 years for what God gave us here at Freedom Christian Church. Yes, in 1983, I became a Christian. My life changed, changed forever. But very soon I knew that God had called me to minister. I didn't know what that looked like. I've shared with you a number of times how along the way God has given us prophetic words. Prophetic words that have come true, not immediately, maybe 10, 15, 20 years later. But God told us it was going to happen. And when he told us, I believed it would happen. But in the meantime, I got into the word of God. We did that together. We, we, we trained and we learned and we looked and we got the word of God into our beings. We joined a church and be, became part of the, the ministry team. Eventually becoming a leader in the church. Eventually becoming a pastor, all in God's plan. You know, God's boot camp is not easy. <laughs> and that's, that's the, 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 the part I struggle with when people come to certain churches and they say, you give your life to Jesus Christ and all your problems are going to go away. You know, you, you, you name it and claim it and it's going to be yours and all of those things. I have a problem with that. Because if that's true, what I went through for 25, 30 years is, is just a lie, if that's the case. But I don't think so. I, I don't see in any scriptural evidence where God calls somebody and the problems disappear. In fact, the problems got worse. The issues in their life got worse, in their family. You don't have to look at Job. Oh, well, that wasn't prosperity preaching to Job, was it? Yeah. Absolutely not. And so we learned over the years to understand that this vision or this promise from God was for a point in time. And so we come here 20 years ago, in 2002, we, we moved, came to a call at a church that we, we believe God brought us to, still believe that as part of the plan. And then after 10 years of that, I believe the appointed time arrived. During that time of leaving one church and starting freedom, uh, Julie found a book that uh, one of our pastors gave us back in England, and it was the book of Ruth of how, uh, sorry, Esther, of how God uh, looked at a situation in, in Esther's time and how God had promised Esther that while the people were being persecuted, there was a time when they would be free and be liberated. And it was in God's appointed time. And he told Esther it was for such a time as this. And so it was when we started freedom. We believed it was for such a time as this. This was God's appointed time. And it was about the here and now. I had 10, 15, 20 years prior to that in ministry. It, it was nothing to do with that. It was about that time there and then. Coming here and then starting Freedom Christian Church. That was the past. And I don't want to live in the past. When Joshua took the reins from Moses, God had to tell him, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Find out in Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. It was a new time for Joshua. Moses had done brilliant. He got them to that point. And now it was for a different time, the appointed time as it was for us at the beginning of Freedom Christian Church. And guess what? God asked Joshua to do things that Moses didn't do. To run with a vision that God gave him. And that was to take the people into the promised land. 
so it was as we began God gave us a vision that vision will continue to some extent or to however much an extent Pastor Larry wants to but if it changes dramatically from that dynamic then we have to ask God about the direction of that because I don't, I don't think the vision of an individual Christian and a, a, a church is difficult I really don't if you get into the word of God and you see what God's plan is and what he wants Little nuances will be different for different churches. I get that. And he'll give Pastor Larry a variation on a theme maybe. Or he might just run with the freedom vision statement and continue in the same vein. You need, what you need to do is pray for him. You need to support him and be there for him. But guess what? God will give him a vision as he gave us that 10 years ago, which we ran with. Now, my race at freedom is finished. It's coming to an end. You know, it doesn't matter how small this vision might seem compared to the Bayside churches or the Sun Coast Community Churches or whatever name you might want to call it, church. Our vision is to reach, teach, and disciple. You know, we started this ministry with prayer. I mentioned that early on. We had a Bible study in the January at a place that we rented out for a month. That was in January 2012. And look where we are today. Renting realtor's place, renting Beneva Christian Fellowship Hall, and then God providing this three years ago. One of the things I read somewhere about a church that has a vision and is running in it is that the resources and funds will follow. That God will provide for the ministry that's needed. I don't believe you acquire funds to build a vision. I believe you have a vision and God will provide the funds. So Saul saw Goliath and saw how big the problem was. David saw Goliath and saw how big the target was. God has given us this place because we've kept our eyes on him and the vision he's given us. He's blessed us with the resources to keep this ministry going. Let's believe him for greater things that lie ahead when our new pastor comes. Let's keep praying for provision. We've done that from the, the beginning. To, to ask God to provide for us. And boy has he done that. I've been blown away by being blessed of how he's provided through those who come to Freedom Christian Church. Yes, every ministry needs provision. It's a biblical concept. But you and I have to be supportive of, of the ministry that he's given us to believe that he's going to supply that, but we have to reach the people. I've often said it before, it only takes every single one of us to have a vision to bring one person to Jesus Christ in the next 12 months and guess what this congregation will double in size if that's our goal if we're serious about reaching people for Christ we have to commit it to the Lord in prayer don't stop praying try and come to the prayer meetings Try and support what God has done from the beginning because it's all been birthed in prayer. Beginning of this year, if you remember, we, we prayed for the lost in our families, in our neighborhood. We prayed and we nailed names to that cross for people to come to know Jesus Christ. There's a number already come to Jesus Christ, none more so than our family. 
a nephew and niece. The nephew became a Christian at the beginning of this year. Julie had a prompting from God to send our niece Alex a letter with a tract in it, the gospel tract, with a prayer in the back of it. This week she called her sister and said, did Alex get the letter? She said, oh yeah. And she said she's prayed that prayer twice. Given a life to Jesus Christ. Wow. Part of our family. That's a mission. A vision. Those are the names that we need to reach for Jesus Christ. One day we're going to see him in heaven again. And we need to keep that in front of us every time we come into this place. This church is birthed in prayer. Keep praying. I don't believe we'll see revival until we pray. Every great revival has begun with prayer. And I believe God has called us in these last days to make a difference for his eternal kingdom. So let me finish by asking you, are you one of those people who want to make a difference? Are you going to commit your time here to serving God and serving Pastor Larry as the pastor? We met last week as a leadership with Pastor Larry present and every single leader committed to support him going forward. Everyone who was there, there was one who wasn't, but I know he will. You and I have to do the same. Even I'm going to commit when I leave to support him. If you want to be baptized after I've left, I'll come and baptize you. Or marry you. Or whatever you want me to do. I'm going to support Larry. It's not over in terms of the vision of this church going forward. I want you and I to commit to the vision of this church under a new pastor and guess what I believe this church can go even further than it's come in 10 years in this next phase do you believe that? Amen, Amen. let's pray shall we Father this morning we thank you we thank you that we can come and renew our vision for you, renew our commitment because, Lord, we want to see people coming to know Jesus Christ. We thank you for this time. This time as we've worshipped you today. As we've uh, experienced the great talent of our puppet ministry and the blessing that that brought me in particular. Just thank you, Lord, how that ministered to me. And I know it did to all of our family. Lord, I thank you for your word. How that's reinvigorated uh, each one of us going forward. To understand that this is the continuation of something that you've called Freedom Christian Church 10 years ago to do. And we need to continue the race with the vision that you've given us. Lord, I, I thank you for all of the people involved in this ministry. Lord, I want to pray for Pastor Larry and Mindy right now. Just bless them as they come and, and just continue, take over where I left off and just say, fill him with your spirit, lead him, direct him. So that, Lord, this church goes on to greater things. We praise you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.